This is from Edgley, and Edgley has an older brother who's 42. Her older brother has Asperger's syndrome. Their mother passed away. And where Edgley and her older brother get along really well, the older brother's wife doesn't get along very well with Edgley. Now, the older brother came to Edgley and accused her of possibly poisoning their mother. Yeah, I know. Yes. So she was obviously set aside from this. She didn't really understand where it came from. She assumed it must have come from the wife. But she really wants to get along with her brother. And so her question is, does his Asperger's mean I have to do everything the way he wants to do it or interpret the things the way he says? Why is my relationship with my older brother now always one way? There doesn't seem to be any empathy or compassion or give and take on his behalf. Is he likely to change his view in the future? She wants to know how to deal with him in this most unpleasant situation. It is, but there's several questions have arisen there. In relation to the accusation that she may have poisoned their mother, mm -hmm. you may have what I call Aspie faulty logic. So he may have overheard something and misinterpreted it, mm -hmm. may have misunderstood what was occurring, and has made an assumption. And that assumption has now become categorical and he's working on that assumption. So we need to find out from that brother, when did you first have that thought? What were the circumstances? Who said what? And so it may be an inadvertent misinterpretation that he's now taken as categorical. Sometimes people make a throw and like, oh, I bet you killed your mother for the inheritance. Mm. Oh, that's a thought. When the person was joking, mm. you know, they'll throw away a remark of that. And yeah, yeah, I suppose you're glad that she died. You know, get rid of the old girl. And they think that that's a serious accusation. So I don't know quite when that occurred. With her relationship with her brother, it's going to be a difficult one because he has his own way of doing things and at 42 he's fairly sort of rigid in the way he does things. If he was 14 there may be significant changes but mm -hmm. at 42 you're fairly stable in your personality and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's really trying to work with him on a balance, a compromise between the two of you. Usually in those situations we first of all go through the brother's perspective and acknowledge that from your point of view this, this, this and this but then say well okay from my perspective there's this, this, this and this we need to compromise here, we need to sort things out. Otherwise, what's not good for either of us or both of us is conflict, disappointment, mm -hmm. annoyance, etc. So to avoid those emotions, we need to work constructively on this. We need to be honest, we need to look at a compromise. Mm -hmm. But go through without accusations and emotionality, because once you become emotional with him, he's going to become perhaps quite defensive or antagonistic. Mm -hmm. So it's working logically. Sometimes it helps if there's a third party, maybe a family member, that can act as a neutral person to understand both perspectives. Mm -hmm. But the risk can be for some with Asperger's in the family that if they dislike a family member, they may go, that's it, I'm never going to talk to them again. And they don't. Mm -hmm. I've known some fathers because their child has, as a kid, made a mess of their food or something like that. Right, I'm not going to talk to him again. Mm. And, th and they do that for decades. So there can be a very black and white tolerance or intolerance of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So approach it logically, pragmatically, not yes. emotionally. Yes. And if there's a third party there that most likely the brother trusts, that's best. Yeah. Not the brother's wife. No, it needs to be somebody neutral who understands both perspectives. Okay. It may be a family friend. This next is from Victor. Now, Victor asks several components to this question. There's only one I think we can address in the amount of time we have. Victor says, I'm 46 and I've diagnosed myself at 40. He talks about a term, he refers to it as, as Aspergian masks. He said, I am so good at pretending to be normal that my now ex-doctor didn't believe I was actually autistic. And here's his question. First off, he doesn't like being fake. What can I do to learn how to communicate? What can I do to communicate better? How can I not have meltdowns? How can I learn to have a relationship? How can I learn everything else I haven't learned, but how can I live without wearing an Asperian mask? It's a coping mechanism. Gets you by. Starts off when you're young. It's an intelligent way of coping. I'm not good, not uh, successful at fitting in. I'm concerned about my emotions, and my emotions put people off. Mm -hmm. 
my social confusion and clumsiness puts people off. So I'll create a mask, I'll create a persona. So they won't see the emotion behind, they won't see the social confusion. The trouble is you then suppress those components. And in part what you're doing is you're faking it and it's an exhausting process. Mm -hmm. But it works and sometimes people are so good at it, people can't recognise the amount of intellectual effort that went into it. And it's a bit like what I call Cinderella at the ball at midnight. At midnight, that's it. I can't cope. I just can't. I'm going to have a social migraine tomorrow and I'm just going to crash out. I really can't do it. But then there's the feeling of, I can't show the real me. There is something despicable about me, but I've got to keep this act together. But it's making you depressed. Mm -hmm. The energy that's going to it, into the disappointment of it, it's a clinical depression that's going on underneath. The question is, should you take that mask off? My view is, yes, you should. But with help in explaining who you are and why you do things. Because if you don't convey the real you and you fake it, the recipe is going to be a lifetime of depression and exhaustion. So once you know who you are and stop faking it and appreciate who you are and be proud of who you are, that can lead you to be the real you whoever you are in that situation. Now you may explain to people, I'm the sort of person who, and that is explaining your characteristics in terms of eye contact, the things that you can do, or your exhaustion in that situation. But it's basically you have to accept me as who I am. Mm -hmm. And you may not like some of those characteristics, but that's who I am. And so in psychotherapy, I work with people with Asperger's on the concept of self, right from teenage years. Who are you? Be proud of you. We developed a teenage program called Moving to Manhood, and part of that is self-identity and self-worth, not only in your abilities, but in terms of your personality. Mm -hmm. So by being fake, you're also giving false signals to people which are going to affect relationships. So when they see behind the mask, then they're going to leave you because you're not the real person. So if you are going to find that relationship, it's important that you're true to yourself to find someone who really loves you for who you are. So it's not easy to take that mask off, and I think there needs to be someone to give support. Mm -hmm. But the mask needs to go, because I'm afraid temporarily it gives you success, but at terrible personal cost. Mm. I'm starting to wonder if the questions that Victor was actually asking, he already knows the answers to. When he asks things like, how do I learn to communicate? How do I communicate better? If he's wearing the masks, he must also already be quite proficient at being yes. able to communicate. He knows what to do, but the problem is the exhaustion, and it is false. And he's almost got a dual personality. And that could be hell to live with and try and cope with, because I've got to be this. Mm -hmm. um, there's a very good YouTube video by Marge Toodle from Denmark, and she describes in that how she has the facade that people, when she got the diagnosis, couldn't believe it because she was so good. But she said, I will not allow people to see behind the mask. Mm. But it's exhausting. And it's, in fact, a very harrowing video, which is actually in tears, of saying that you give me the Oscar for my acting. Thank you. I'm that yeah. good. But it's the cost that it has internally. It's a successful coping strategy, but one I'd be very cautious about. Leanne Holiday Willie, in her book, Pretending to be Normal, describes that as how she acts. She describes very clearly that coming out of the closet, being true to who she really is, mm -hmm. has made a huge difference for her life mm -hmm. in terms of happiness. In the book, does she talk about how to do that? Is there a plan for how to do that? I think Leanne in her personality was very, she's very vivacious <laughs> and she just came out. That's Leanne. Um, she sort of comes out the closet and says, yeah, this is me and you've got to accept me for who I am. Now some people can do that. They've got the confidence to do it. Some people don't. So it depends on the personality. So I do recommend that this person has a mentor who can help. Now that mentor can either be professional or somebody else with Asperger's who's done the same thing. Mm 